Hey, welcome to the Virtually Speaking podcast series on VMware Cloud Foundation inside the private cloud. Uh, we're, we're going through all the components of VMware Cloud Foundation, uh, and this is going to be a great one because, John, we're talking about storage. I was going to say, I feel like you, you welcome to my house. Like, <laughs> welcome home. Like, it's this is where I started. This is where we're going. I'm all about. This. Yeah, interestingly enough, yes, you did start. You started in, in, in vSAN, which is certainly a part of the story for, for VMware Cloud Foundation, but there's more to the story. And joining us on this episode is Senior Director from Product Management, Rakesh. Rakesh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, uh, John. Yeah, the good thing about coming to Palo Alto is always getting to speak to product management. I, I always enjoy the conversations, hearing the futures, learning all the things that are going on. So Rakesh, thanks for taking a minute to talk to us today. Uh, we want to start real high level, like VMware Cloud Foundation is out and there's various offerings for VMware Cloud Foundation as it pertains to storage. Maybe you can uh, just start by giving us the overview. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, VMware Cloud Foundation, as you know, we had like tens of thousands of SKUs in the past, and it's come down to just two major offerings, right? VCF and VVF, right? VCF is our full stack offering, and um, VVF is uh, just the vSphere and operations. Now, the key thing is vSAN is part of both VCF and VVF. It's included as part of both. Uh, in VCF, you get like one TIB per core of vSAN, and with VVF, you get uh, a freemium model where you can try some vSAN out in that model as well. Yeah, I think that makes sense too, because obviously this, you know, I think a VMware Cloud Foundation customer is maybe larger, uh, has lots of hosts and lots of storage requirements, whereas VVF maybe not as large and, uh, and you know, maybe they're just, either they're growing or, they're, or, or it's the right size. That, that's exactly the rationale. If you take a typical uh, mid-size VCF deployment of 2000 cores, they get two petabytes of vSAN at one tip per core. And I think that's uh, that's the scale of storage that those VCF deployments require, uh, while the uh, VVF deployments tend to be uh, smaller in size. And so, for these customers, you know, I assume most of those customers at, at that one uh, tip per core, you know, they basically can assume that. But what if they need more? Yeah, great question. So this is what we include in the base VCF. Now, if you need more, we have an add-on SKU which you can buy per terabyte. So you have an add-on vSAN SKU that you can purchase per terabyte. So let's say you need an additional uh, 1,000 terabytes, then you can buy and uh, you can add an add-on to the base VCF SKU. So, you know, going through this, I, as much as I love talking about pricing and packaging, um, what, are, what are the benefits here of this new offering? So yeah. So first off, as you can imagine, right, I, I just talked to you about... Uh, um, uh, a standard VCF deployment with 2,000 cores, you get two petabytes of vSAN. That's a lot of storage included in that base price, right? And so as a result, the TCO of vSAN in VCF is significantly lower than other competitive storage platforms, right? In fact, it, from a CapEx standpoint, if you do the math, you see it's, it's, it's almost 62% lower in CapEx compared to traditional storage offerings. And on top of that, you know, the HCI offering in, in VCF and the automation that we provide delivers about 73% OPEX improvements and 250% um, higher ROI. Customers can realize their savings, like we, we estimate about 7 million in about five years. Oh, wow. So, I mean, that makes sense on the CapEx size because you're just looking at buying, you know, grabbing a bunch of NVMe drives, you know, that's regular server drives for that, you're having to buy proprietary controllers or fabrics or things. Exactly. And and we've also introduced support for read intensive drives. You know, if, if you don't have really high performance requirements, but you have high capacity requirements, and those drives are uh, uh, way more cost effective than the high end um, uh, TLC drives, uh, which are performance oriented. So really you can- pick, 16 terabyte drives, I can just pack into my- You can just pack into your, and, and again, as I am, I'm going to talk about a disaggregated storage with vSAN, where you yeah. can disaggregate petabytes of storage onto a vSAN cluster, and that's where these 16 terabyte drives come in. Okay, so at that point, I've got a two server, a C24 drive base, I'm like over 300 terabytes of raw storage. There you that's, go. So, so what does this look like from a topology basis of like how I deploy this as I start to scale this up? This is a lot denser than what we looked at previously. Right. So, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, one of the key uh, uh, advantages of vSAN and the disaggregated vSAN in this new VCF offering is that 
uh, we provide flexible deployment models, right? So if you take a VCF, for instance, and you can create, as you know, you can create workload domains. You right. can have one workload domain with direct attached storage, which is HCI. You can have a second workload domain with disaggregated storage or remote storage, which is what I call vSAN Max, uh, serving out storage to a compute cluster. And then you can have a third workload domain where you can mix and match this, right? So essentially what the customer is buying is just one thing. You're buying VCF, you get vSAN, but then the fact that you can really um, deploy in such a flexible fashion for all different kinds of workloads is where you really start realizing your TCO and the flexibility benefit. So if I've got an application that has really just heavy storage capacity scaling, completely independent of the compute, I could go with the disaggregated model. Um, if I've got pretty, if I've got a workload that's linearly scaling my storage performance capacity with that, so like VDI or something, yeah, where balance. 500 desktops to 5,000 desktops, it's just going to be 10 times more compute and storage evenly. I might just do traditional HCI. Exactly, and we even have customers who are mixing and matching. They have both types of them, and so you can actually mix and match an HCI cluster with disaggregated. So I said I didn't enjoy licensing, but it's you know, uh, how does this work? Do I have to go buy a separate license for that? No. Or? You don't buy, so so this is the beauty of this new offering. Uh, with VCF, all you buy is one license. You're entitled to uh, all the capacity you want for vSAN. I mean, in terms of one TB per core. If you need additional capacity, you buy additional capacity, but- uh, I can that, pull it and I can move it around. You can pull it, different. you can move it around. Oh, you can right. you can use it as HCI, you can use it as disaggregated. You can do whatever you and want. this is tied to the raw disks, not the it's usable, raw. my compression algorithm. It doesn't matter in this. Or it doesn't matter. Things. You're paying for raw capacity. Okay, so I, I can look at the hardware bomb and know what I'm supposed to have. Exactly. It's very simple. I'll to still run Williams well. script to be sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I certainly remember conversations, you know, when we're talking to customers about vSAN, you know, a lot of times, especially when it comes to VMware Cloud Foundation, you know, there are some customers that are going to be like, oh, I already have traditional storage. You know, like, why do I don't want vSAN or, you know, I, mean, I want to use this storage. Right. And I think a lot of the reason uh, was cost. I've already paid for this. You know, it's going to be cheaper for me because I own this. But like, uh, you know, it seems like the, 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 the cost for vSAN is certainly going down. In, in VCF, so uh, that kind of, for greenfield deployments, I guess that kind of like moves away. But what about for folks that are still using, you know, existing storage and they want to use it in, in certain workload domains? Excellent question, Pete. So first off, right, uh, brownfield is very critical. Just to give you a sense of how much vSAN is out there in the world, yeah. we have like 15 exabytes of vSAN across 15 million VMs on 1 million hosts and our largest customer is at one exabyte of capacity on vSAN, right? That's a couple that's, <laughs> that's the brownfield scale we are talking about. So excellent question, right? So, uh, you know, we have device strategies to uh, help customers migrate. So let's say majority of these customers are in vSphere. You know, they can take a staged approach, a phased approach to migrate these workloads onto vSAN, right? In phase one, they can move uh, some of the uh, tier two workloads like VDI and um, IT apps and test devs and so on and so forth, you can move that to vSAN while you protect your uh, traditional storage array investment because you have you probably have to depre depreciate and uh, you have some more time to uh, exhaust the support support cycle on that traditional array, right? And then that that in itself we estimate will reduce 60%, will deliver 60% lower CapEx. I'm not, just having, I'm not having to recapitalize that array and exactly. that platform. And, and that always got weird because if I'm three years into an array and it's going to run for five years as the support cycle, do I really want to go buy a shelf that's only going to last for 24 months? So then it became like a weird, like, exactly. I can avoid all that by just buying some drives, throwing them in those VCF hosts. And, and that's it, right? And then once you're ready to retire the array, you know, by then you can move all the workloads, business critical applications, all of those workloads onto vSAN. And then um, that becomes a staged approach. And at that point, you know, we estimate that the customer's CapEx goes down by 75%, right? And then they don't have to end up buying servers for HCI at the, at the middle of the journey. They can do it by the time they are ready to retire those arrays, right? So this is the this is the journey that we are projecting for customers to move on to vSAN and VCF for Brownfield. This is really important because there's this concept that was introduced to me a while back. It's the, the bubble gap cost. If anytime you're trying to migrate from one place to another, one system to another, via, you know, people who are trying to go from private cloud to hybrid cloud or private cloud to public cloud, or or they're like, I want to leave this data center. I don't like my my colo bill or something. I want to go to a different data center. 
And the problem is, is you end up always with these staggered assets of like, well, the server is good till 2027, but the storage is only good till 2025 and the switch is good till this. And it's like, how do I, and I like this phased approach of like, just make sure you're buying hosts that are vSAN ready nodes. And you know, you can buy drives as needed just in time, even that transition. So I'm not having to buy storage assets three years ahead of when I need them or, you know, having duplicate costs, you, you collapse that bubble of inflated cost um, to make that transition smoothly. Exactly. And, you know, interestingly, you know, who's the last person who talked to me about this uh, bubble cost is our CIO, Alan Davidson. Oh, so beca because this is precisely the strategy that Broadcom IT is adopting to move and to move their workloads onto vSAN. They have some time yeah. to uh, retire their existing arrays, and by the time uh, yeah, they've got assets, they've already paid for them. Exactly. Like, there's no point in throwing them away. Yeah, I mean, it's it's some cost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so Rakesh, I have to admit, like one of the things I enjoy about coming on to Palo Alto campus is chatting with you, as I mentioned, and uh, as being inside of product management for storage, you've got a lot of vision. You talk to the, you, you work with the engineering teams, and. I don't want you to share all the secrets or, or, or get in trouble for giving us new features, but I would love to in sort of a future conversation, like what's on the, you know, what's on the, what are you guys looking forward to in the future for, what's the future of vSAN storage for VMware Cloud Foundation? Absolutely. I'm happy to go over that, right? I think before we talk about the future, let's talk about the present, right? Oh, there you go. <laughs> so <laughs> we launched vSAN ESA a couple of years ago, which is our next generation storage platform. And the adoption has been, you know, uh, uh, off the charts. You know, our customers are loving it. Some of the largest VCF customers have standardized on ESA. And it's essentially, it's, it's uh, as you know, it's a, a file system that we rewrote, uh, which is optimized for modern platforms, modern hardware, NVMe drives, and uh, uh, very um, attuned to the cloud, as well as, uh, um, you know, providing flexible deployment models like disaggregated storage and HCI. I mean, that, that was the whole design point for de developing ESA. The adoption's been great for the last two years. Oh yeah, we've done several episodes on ESA. So for those listening, please go back and take a look at some of the express storage architecture conversations we've had because the performance is insane. Yeah. You know, the capacity savings, it really is like at this point, I don't understand if there would be a customer that would still choose OSA over ESA. I can't imagine why, but yeah, but we were in full feature parity. Yeah, we had full feature parity. And also I think what it did was uh, things like vSAN and Max, they unlock new use cases, yeah. right? I think uh, John touched upon some of them, like database consolidation, blades, and if you want r to rapidly scale modern apps and uh, essentially scale out storage for AI ML workloads, right? vSAN Max is going to be the de facto storage for private AI foundation, and we're working very closely with that team to c come up with that offering. So, so you know, lots of exciting new use cases have been opened up. Uh, with the combination of ESA and vSAN Max with disaggregated storage. That's where we are today, right? Uh, but uh, one of the key design points, if you remember the last time I talked to you about ESA, one of the key design points for ESA was snapshots. Yeah. Snapshots are very foundational, very highly scalable. And uh, uh, what it does is it actually opens up a whole a new set of use cases for vSAN data protection, right? So historically, you know, those who've been using OSA, they use vSAN and we provide APIs to do a backup. You back it up to uh, third-party storage with some limited snapshots, right? What you get now with, with vSAN is a full-fledged snapshot manager in VCF and where you can schedule, retain uh, snapshots at a very low granularity. You have huge depth of snapshots. You can manage large amounts of snapshots and now... And then uh, you can use those for, it opens up new use cases such as operational recovery. Uh, let's say you fat finger a VM, right? You can quickly recover it. You don't have to go to your backup for that, right? And uh, also uh, a ransomware recovery. If you, if you actually uh, are uh, attacked by a, you know, a ransomware attack, you can, uh, you can quickly recover from that because we have integration with our ransomware recovery suite of products, right? And all while your traditional backup software will still leverage these still if you call leverage them IVs. Them. Exactly. It's to accelerate your existing backups. Exactly. Now, from a future standpoint, uh, now that we have such scalable snapshots and snapshot management, uh, where we are taking the product uh, in the future is to enable replication of these snapshots, in, uh, right? So large-scale replication of these snapshots to unco uh, unlock use cases like disaster recovery. Oh, yeah. Right? So it's all one integrated product, one workflow within VCF, right? You can single-click and protect your entire 
workload domain or whatever, if you will. And then if you have a disaster or you have a cyber attack, you can quickly recover from all of that. Um, and that's great. You know what that means? So you'll have vSAN Max on the target. And all these customers who love vSAN as a primary storage are going to start using vSAN as a secondary storage or a backup target. You know, and this makes sense, especially for like fan end designs. If I think about it, being able to build a multi petabyte cluster that I can, I can slurp that data in, I can take the capabilities of VMware Live Recovery in terms of orchestration of that replication, exactly. or, or the you know some of the it's ransomware type discovery capabilities or the added security suite, but put that on top of it, you know, being able to fail fail into an environment. Um, this this sounds pretty exciting from being able to to do disaster recovery and defeat the largest competitor obstacle to disaster recovery, which is, that sounds expensive, um, you know. Exactly. And I think the the cost economics plays a big role as well. And with those large um, uh, read intensive drives that you were talking about, the 16 terabyte drives, as you slot them in into a vSAN max, it becomes a replication target. And that 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 significantly lowers the cost yeah. of a replication target. A two rack unit, you get twenty four of those, or possibly thirty two. As you start looking at the U dot three form factors, you're looking at over three hundred terabytes with what's on the truck today of drives. I'm sure the the roadmaps, the SSD vendors never seem to find, you know, are always seeming to find new ways to cram more data into those drives. So Ab it's absolutely. So let me tell you a secret. Uh, you know, now uh, you must have heard of QLCs. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. extremely. So it's an open secret that uh, we are looking at optimizing QLCs for some of these use cases as well. Yeah, because right now we're read intensive TLC. But... Yeah. And so that's going to drive the cost down by an order of magnitude. Yep. Because as you know, today, QLCs are actually cheaper than magnetic drives from some of these vendors. Nah, that's crazy. Yeah. I don't want to get you in too much trouble. Don't share too much of the things we're working on, but uh, this is a public podcast. <laughs> I, you know, I, I've, I've worked with you uh, for almost 10 years now, I think. And I remember when I was first talking to you, we were at like vSAN and my cache drives were 200 gigabyte SATA drives yeah. that, you know. Yeah, um, actually 120 when we started, <laughs> right? We have come a long way. And nowadays you don't get a cache drive lower than 1.6 terabytes. Yeah, you can't find it. They don't sell them. They don't, they don't sell, sell them. them. Yeah. yeah. You know, which is the whole explanation of why ESA makes so much sense, right? Like you, you move with the technology. I think there was a time for OSA when the drives were were not cost effective, and it paying, made sense I was to have two, two tier architecture. I was paying two point five dollars a gigabyte, and that was buying the drive like straight from Intel, sure. like not from like an OEM with a markup. So yeah, we've come a long way, and vSAN is looking good, absolutely. And I'm I'm so glad that it's still the core. Uh, storage option for VMware Cloud Foundation. Rakesh, thank you so much for joining us on Virtually Speaking and enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.